Hello, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and today we're looking at a first submission by Kristen of her horse, Sylvia. Sylvia is a nine-year-old quarter horse Oldenburg cross that's used primarily for driving. So she's just getting started with the flat work here, but has been having difficulty uh, with the driving work and getting the horse to settle in the frame and in the contact with the bridle. So we're going to take a look at that in a moment. But certainly this is the place to start to fix these problems that you're having is going back to the lunge line. We're going to look at your... Uh, dressage test with the driving uh, in just a few moments, but let's start off here taking a look at this uh, uh, as to what's going right. And the good thing is that you're already getting this walk much, much better uh, than it is on the uh, tape of you driving the horse. And the first thing to realize is that once again, no matter what sport you're doing with a horse, it's absolutely paramount to the horse's training that it learn to connect across its top line so that it can propel itself forward from behind rather than in front. And this horse, um, unfortunately, is at the moment, and that's the difficulty that you're having there in your driving work, is the horse isn't working over its back and just kind of running into your hands, which we'll talk about in a moment. But just know that this is the uh, approach to correct all of these problems. Now, as far as this tape goes, uh, when we get here in the walk, it's actually getting pretty good here in a moment and starts to stretch out to the point that we'd like to get it to happen as it comes here. Now once she gets there, then we just want to ask for a more active step in the horse. So we get her stretching more forward and more active in the step. But getting the stretch is the first thing that we have to accomplish and you're starting to get that here in the walk. Once again, once you do, then we want to try to encourage the horse a little more forward in the walk. Now one thing I will point out and just something to be careful of, I mean, it doesn't become a problem for you here, but that bucket that you have lying there in the ring um, looks to me like a perfect trap to get the horse into or yourself if you weren't paying attention or the horse got a little difficult, you could easily, uh, while paying attention to the horse, stumble over that. So I'd highly recommend that you get that out of the ring when you're working. You see right there, as you came around, something went wrong, you'd be stumbling over the top of that. And it, of course, the big danger in ever lunging horses and, and working from the ground is that we may get caught up in those ropes or something. So you could certainly see how having a clear area is one of the most important uh, safety rules that we want to start with. But you're getting her into a good walk here. You're getting some good places here where it starts to stretch down. It comes around the corner here. I believe she goes down a little more. But it needs to become much more active. Now, one thing I would really suggest you do, having looked at this horse, is she's actually quite hollow and moving quite stiffly across her back and really not engaging much. Though right there is the best that she does in all of this video. That's about the best that she is right there. You notice that when she put her head down, how all of a sudden the hind leg started to swing deeper under the body. So once again, that's what we're looking for. So getting that place that allows the horse at whatever its level of um, development is to be able to find that place where it can work over its back. And we know that place uh, you know, pretty easily once you get the feel of it because the horse will just will seem to take off. There'll be there seem to be no interference um, between you and the horse and, and the gate of just swinging forward and actively and allows us to do nothing at all when the horse is correct. So once again, that's the best work the horse does on this tape is the stretching work in the walk. And of course, that's good. If you're getting that in the walk, you're in the right direction. Now, I would suggest that you take a look at the use of uh, a sham bone with this horse. Um, since the horse is rather hollow and rather resistive to stretching down, it's probably been that way for quite some time, so it can be a little difficult. Now, you will get the job done using the side reins right here, but I suggest you take a look at, at the uh, sham bone work with this horse. Get it stretching a little deeper, and then what I would do if I were you, uh, especially since this is a driving horse, is then take a look at my um, series on long reining horses. And I'd go back to long reining this horse a little more and getting her in the right frame, driving her from the ground before you then hook the horse up. So once again, now we're going to take a look at the, at the horse's dressage test. And once again, that walk when she was stretching is the best thing you've done there so far and the best thing on this tape. So that's where we want to head. So here's going to be the horse uh, working in a, in a dr dressage test, in a driving test. And so what we see, if we look closely here, we can see that, the, once again, the front and back legs of this horse are not moving absolutely together. It's not too bad right there where you're not restraining the neck, but that, that is what happens when you start to ask for a rein back or something like that. And we see the horse kind of pull into the bridle and see how the horse just pulls its neck up. Now we see the underside of the neck, how, how you neck the horse has become there. So the horse is really... Um, straining to be able to do what you're asking it to do here with its head that high it literally can't get over its back so we want to start getting the horse stretching much much deeper 
once again, if we see the horse come down the long side here, we see how irregular the trot is. I mean, the back legs at times seem to be running over the front legs or the front legs running away from the back legs. You know, and the higher the horse's head goes, the more disengaged that is. And we can see that it's very flat footed. You can see how there's really almost no bend in the horse's hocks behind, uh, which tells us the horse isn't really lifting and, and pushing you forward and br then transferring that into the harness there. What we see the horse doing here is kind of pulling itself along by its shoulders. The back legs aren't really much involved in propelling the horse forward, which of course is why you have so much resistance to the bridle. As soon as you start to slow down, the horse is really quite uh, uncomfortable over its back. And I did go and watch uh, quite a few of these other videos from some of these driving um, shows, and I could see that you know the same problems are happening in, in driving that are happening in dressage. The horses are not in the correct frame. Um, Many of them that I looked at were much worse than this one, extremely hollow, some very broken over in the neck. Um, one I looked at was almost completely sway-backed, which is kind of interesting since it's a driving horse. I mean, but that shows you how, how disconnected the horses are. And once again, just like a horse that we're riding, you know, it's so important for them to be balanced over their back. So that's what we have to do is get this horse working much, much deeper so that it can develop. Now, there's also the other issue of, you know, this particular horse, as do most mares, their headset is pretty flat. That is, they come out pretty straight out of the shoulders. So once again, a horse built like this one is never going to have a big high headset like a Frisian or something like that that has a big sloping shoulder and a neck that almost comes straight up out of the body. And that being the biggest problem that we see, you know, in all kinds of riding is people trying to, you know, make their horses look like some other horse looks, which is essentially what led to the downfall of dressage to begin with, because people were looking at these, some of these European horses and the lip designers and the Andalusians that have these big sloping shoulders that the necks come straight up out of. Um, and the, there's just no way a horse built like this one is ever going to have that same headset. That doesn't mean it can't work over its back. It doesn't mean it can't collect. It just means it's never going to have a big high neck set the way you see on some of these horses. So you see what happens here is you start to open up. It starts scrambling. You can see the horse just scrambling along, trying to pull its back end along with its shoulders as it gets more and more u neck there. So once again, you know, this is the, just like when we ride, having the horse over the back and getting it balanced is a big key to your safety here in driving horses. You know, and it doesn't matter, you know, just as in all horse sports, I was fortunate enough to be very good friends with uh, the Simpson family, John Simpson, who was the greatest hardest racer of all time. And I used to stay at their estate in Florida when I showed my horses on the Florida circuit. And I spent a lot of time talking to him. He was an amazing man. By the time I knew him, he was blind from so many uh, accidents, you know, on the track. But he trained his horses himself and he had a, a house on his own private racetrack where he would sit and he would just listen to the horses come by and then tell the drivers uh, what they were doing wrong by how he heard the footfall. So that's very important to understand that that same thing becomes true. You can hear when a horse is starting to travel correctly, it travels very lightly over the ground. We don't have this kind of thumping, nor do we have this sort of erratic running that's what you're seeing with this horse because it doesn't know how to do this correctly. So it just kind of takes off running with its head in the air and, and back hollow. So once again, those are the things we need to correct. And you will in time working this way. So we're going to see the horse stretch the other way here and on the lunge line. And once again, the best work that we do here that I see on this tape is really the walk work. It's about the only place, time that she's really getting stretched into the contact. So that's a good step. At least you're getting something right. So start getting that right, building on that, get the horse all the way deep into the stretch when you're mounted before you ever start trying to trot the horse. Because it, and once again, Everything we do wrong, we just have to redo at some point. So um, the best way to train horses is simply not to teach them things that you're going to have to undo later on. So taking your time. So once again, that starts with the lunging work. And once again, since you are uh, training driving horses here, I would highly recommend that once you get the horse stretching in the lunge, that is, and I would suggest they take a look at the... Uh, um, our videos on how to use a sham bone because that would actually I think be a good call for this horse and would help her uh, unlock that neck a little bit and be a little easier for you to get there so you want to take a look at that and see if that might help you you can certainly get there the way you're going about it here with the long side reins but you get the feeling sometimes you know when horses have been um, going around hollow for a long time they actually forget how to move like we have to remind them how to how to move correctly and get back over their backs again and once again since so many of us, especially here in California, have so little 
uh, pasture for horses to be on. And when I say pasture, I mean with grass, not a dirt lot. A dirt lot, we see the same thing. Horses just stand in the corners of the dirt lot and they don't do anything. They don't walk around. That's why we want horses on grass, if possible, so they walk around. And if you do have your horses on a dirt lot, I would highly suggest that, you know, instead of putting the feet in one place, that you move it around or scatter it around the ground so the horses have to look for it and keep moving around would be a better way to go than just having them standing in one corner of uh, the corral all the time. So, Think about that. Getting back to this once again, the walk is not too bad. It starts to pick up a little bit here and starts to stretch. And of course, the beauty of the walk is that you can do a lot of it. So you could easily spend an hour just walking the horse in the stretch without any complications. However, as soon as we start trotting, we're putting a lot more pressure on the on the horse's joints and back, and it makes it much more difficult and uh, much more much more easy to uh, create a problem. With the horse that we're going to have to correct later on and that's what we don't want to do or to lame them so once again that's the whole point of getting horses working over their backs you know for instance if you were driving a horse and it's not working over its back i guarantee you if you had to drive really long distances you'd have a trouble getting there just like horses that are ridden hollow you stand a lot more chance of uh, wearing the horse out so to speak long before you get to your destination so once again, this walk is looking pretty good here. Your lunging technique is pretty good. You might be able to get a little closer. Once again, I would remind you to take that bucket out of the middle of the arena so you're not tripping over that. I know it sounds silly and you've probably done it many, many times, but I have seen so many accidents um, like this caused by something as simple as that. You come around the corner here, you're not paying attention, you trip over that. and If you fell with all those lines on you, you end up with them wrapped around your leg. And believe me, I've been drugged once by, in my life and I never want to have it happen again. I for, fortunately, I came out of it unscathed, but um, it's a very good way to get yourself very, very injured. So we can see from this trot work, just like when you uh, are driving the horse, the same thing is happening. The hind legs are kind of falling out behind and the horse is remaining in this kind of stiff position where her, uh, you can see the bottom of her neck clearly rigid, though she starts to soften here a little bit. So once again, watch how the, as the horse is trotting here, how you can kind of see the back end is almost behind the horse. If you look at, look at the, the legs as they're on the ground, look how far behind the horse's body the hind leg is before it comes up off the ground again. It should not go far that far back. So that tells me the horse is kind of collapsing its middle as well as the look of the neck and the disconnection of the leg. So once again, the horse is not yet working over its back here in the trot. has a few moments where it starts to stretch. Now what I would do if I were you, if we're going to continue working with just the side reins, I would just come back to a walk more often, reestablish that swinging walk. I wouldn't go around more than uh, two or three times in this trot work if you don't get what you're looking for. And go back to the walk where you can get it, reestablish that, and then go back to the trot and try again. But you see what I'm talking about there? You just barely missed that bucket that time. And then, uh, you know, with the horse to step in that or not pay attention to where it's going, you know, if you're schooling it a little bit and it's not looking where it's going, you can easily just trip right over the top of that and end up in a heap. Or both of you end up in a heap. So be a little aware of that. So once again here, this trot is just kind of not going to do you much good. It's just trotting hollow for too long. So I would have already come back to the walk and asked the horse to stretch more in the walk by this time. Now you might want to also get the horse a little closer to you as you're doing here. Um, be sure you take the slack out of the line and even walk with the horse a little more so that you can get a little more drive forward. So you can begin to just send the horse out on the circle. Now you can see what this horse does a little bit on the circles here. Its shoulders are always kind of pulled a little bit outside. It doesn't really have its hindquarters and its shoulders on the same circle. The hindquarters are kind of trailing to the inside. So part of getting a horse to engage over its back is getting it to engage that inside hind leg. That's why the shoulder ends and leg yields are so important. But even on the lunge line, we can actually, a correct circle is made by leg yielding. So we want to move those hindquarters out away from the horse a little more actively till we see that both ends of the horse are on the same circle. Just by doing that alone, the horse will be stepping deeper under the body with its inside hind leg because that's what it's evading doing when it's throwing its shoulders to the outside. It's kind of going around the circle with its, you know, with its body straight and kind of the shoulders out to one side. So once again, coming back to the walk here is what we want to see. At least at the walk here, the horse is starting to stretch, though it could be a lot more active. Now here's another case where you could just work a little closer to the horse. And once again, just to talk a little about where you're going, once you get the source really stretching in the trot, then I would recommend you go back, take a look at my videos on ground driving, since this is a driving horse, 
And uh, I'd go back to your ground driving work and just be really sure that you can get the horse in the right frame, you know, and be able to make halts and all those kinds of things before you ho ever hook the horse back up into the carriage rig. Because once again, that once you're hooked in all that rig, everything becomes a lot more difficult. So if you get that ground driving better, which of course should be the skill of anybody who's training driving horses, it's much more important. Now with riding horses, I don't use it all that much. But because the hardest thing for people to do, and which is the hardest thing for people to do when they're actually driving, is not to just do nothing but pull the horse down with their hands, which is very easily easily done uh, when you have long reins on the horse because the horse can kind of run into your hands. So just like when we ride, the rein should be very light. When the horse is correct, it should be the, the weight of the rein. And we saw some of the problems that you encountered there. Uh, when you were driving, how the horse's neck got so high up. Well, that's why the horse is resisting the bridle. It's not working the, off the back, so you ask it to start, and all it can do is drag itself forward by the shoulders. So once again, getting that engagement from behind um, is so important. So that's the biggest part of your problem. It's not so much this horse seems to be accepting the bit fairly well, but what I saw in the driving work is the horse was very uncomfortable in the frame, especially when you made stops. And you could see how the, the, the pole got way, way too high and the neck got too crunched into the body, which is why the horse immediately started resisting and trying to pull, its, pull out of the bridle because it was in a position that you were making it basically impossible to do the job that you're asking it to do. That is to move forward and lift up its back you know, and press into the rig, but lifting up behind and pushing into it rather than just pulling itself along by its shoulders. And you can see how that happens. Every time the hollow, it, it hollows like that, you can immediately see how short the stride becomes and the horse just kind of starts stabbing its front legs and once again, the back end is just being drug along behind. So once again, this kind of trot work, we want to get back to that walk work a little bit sooner. And once again, I'd work a little closer to the horse in the walk work so that you can keep the horse moving a little more actively forward. When you get out that far away, there's really not much you can do. And once again, you see how the horse's shoulders are slightly pulled outside. So we want to get both ends of the horse on the same circle. Now that's where the, uh, the driving, or the, rather the long reining work can really help you. Because once again, it, it can really help you get the bend and keep the horse moving up into the rig, so to speak, and staying up over its back. So I'd really go back to perfecting that and get that going really well. And once again, you want to do that driving work with the, with the uh, as I show you in the long reining work with the uh, range rather low. But now later on with a driving horse and even a horse that we're working into collection, we would want to work on the higher rings, for instance, of a surcingle, you know, so that we can more emulate what you're doing there in the driving horse. But once again, we don't want to do that too soon. And once again, always taking into consideration, if you look at this horse's neck, you can see that's really the angle that the horse's neck needs to come out of the body. So once again, we can't, you know, every horse cannot fit into the same mold, especially that head and neck position. And that's where people run into more problems than anything else because they're thinking of dressage or whatever they're doing is just this, they have to have this neck position in the right place. Well, you know, every horse once again has a different conformation. So it's gonna make a big difference. Uh, whether you have a horse built like this one or one that's built like a Frisian in terms of where the head and neck are going to ultimately be. So once again, we see starting off in this uh, direction here again, hind legs are kind of falling out behind. You can kind of see, you can see the underside of the neck, how tense that is. So that tells you what little short strides. So the horse is basically stabbing its front legs and pulling with its shoulders rather than getting up underneath itself and pushing its back up and really jumping into the air, which again is why your trot work and your dressage looks so flat because the horse isn't engaging its back at all. And actually it's flexing its hocks more here than it was on, uh, when, when you were driving it, when the horse had almost no flexion in the hocks at all and just moving the, its hind legs very flat footed. So same thing here, you see how the shoulders are being pulled outside, both ends of the horse are not on the same circle. So once again, I'd like to see you get the horse a little closer and you'll probably find that you'll get the stretch a lot quicker. Once again, you see how she comes around that corner. Look where the shoulders are. They're pulled way out of the line of the hindquarters. You can see as it comes around there. You see what I'm talking about. So the first thing you have to get is get this horse to move its hindquarters out away from you, which is the first thing we want to establish when we lunge horses. And once again, I was struck talking to my friend John Simpson, um, who won the Hamletonian five times. His son, Johnny Jr., won it six times, broke his record. And the Hamletonian, for those of you who don't know, is like the Kentucky Derby for, for driving horses, you know. And talking to him about uh, 
how horses must work over their backs. And once again, it was so interesting sitting with him, a blind man, <laughs> training horses at his private racetrack and just listening to the footfalls. He could tell when the horses were heavy on their forehand and he would have the drivers adjust accordingly. So once again, that's what we have to be aware of is the horse lifting its back and pushing forward from behind into the rig, or is it simply just throwing its head up and pulling itself along with the shoulders? Once again, that's pretty much what you're getting at the moment. Now, you had a couple of moments there in that trot that were a little bit better. Once again, we just got to work a little closer. Once again, you can see how far the shoulders are pulled outside. So you're, you're going to start to get a lot better stretch as soon as you get the horse to move out away from you a little bit more. So I'd bring the horse on a little smaller circle, walk with it a little more. So you can send her on a little bit more actively and then try to push the hindquarters away. And what you'll see is as soon as you start to achieve those hindquarters moving away from you, the horse will start stretching better. Now, once again, you can probably achieve the stretch in this. I would suggest you have a look at the uh, videos on the Shambone because um, for horses that are this hollow, and just even if you did it for a couple of weeks, just to really get the horse stretching over the back and then go back to the side reins. Or as you see with us, we once we teach horses to lunge, we don't even put anything on them when they're lunge. We just let them stretch down. Once they learn to stretch, you don't even have to have side reins on. In fact, it's preferable not to have them. But of course, in the beginning, we have to just have something there so the horse feels that contact. He will want to move away from the contact. And that's the whole trick to getting horses to stretch when you're on their back, simply is just having slightly more than the weight of the rein. The horse doesn't want any pre constant pressure on its mouth, evidenced by how miserable so many horses look out there in the dressage ring these days, you know, and uh, swishing their tails and grinding their teeth, you know, and barely moving. Once again, this, this is all just too slow. A little too slow too hollow, too bent to the outside. So once again, it's just those same corrections that need to be made here of just bringing the horse a little closer to you and working the hindquarters more away from you. So then I said, I think the best course of action for you to be would be to, uh, you know, go on trying, if you like, like this, getting a little closer and see if you're seeing if that work can help you get the horse stretched a little deeper. But I definitely suggest the shambone. And once you've got the horse stretching all the way down, and not only until you get that, then I would begin working the horse in the in the driving reins or in long reins so that you can uh, actually work her that way and take contact. So you yourself can practice not hanging on the bridle. I mean, the reason I suggest most people, you know, unless you really know what you're doing, that you don't want to uh, try to long rein horses because most people end up just pulling them back in their hands. And once again, I saw a lot of that. I went and looked at quite a few of the videos, um, actually, to see if I could find a really good one. And then uh, I just didn't have, I didn't find a really good one to show you. I found a couple that were better. But once again, when you, when horses are correct in, in driving, they look just like a riding horse. They're up over their back and you get a moment of suspension um, in the trot as the horse lifts itself and pushes into the rig. But what we don't want to do is see the horses throw its head up and run forward. Once again, that's where all your problems are coming from. So once again, I'd go back to that. So that's the way I'd like to see you do in the near future. Um, try to improve your lunging with the suggestions that I've given you here. If you find you're still not getting the horse to stretch enough in the trot to make it useful, then I'd go to the shambone and see if you can get the horse to unlock a little bit that way. It should help you. And once again, there's complete video series uh, on the website about how to do all of those things. And once again, just the next time, just put that bucket over on the side of the ring someplace so it's not in your way, just for a little safety issue there. So you can also imagine, just like with driving horses, with riding horses, we're a horse that's working over its back, um, for instance, even at a full gallop, if you, uh, a horse starts to step in a little hole or something, you have a much uh, better chance of keeping the horse on all four legs and standing up. And of course, that would be really uh, important if you're driving. You know, I used to do some driving when I was in my youth and uh, also talking to John Simpson about how dangerous it is. But uh, I was driving a horse for a man that owned a, a world champion Arab horse. And I arrived to drive the horse for him and he already had it on the track. And I got on, got in. Once again, this is, this is that uh, case of, you know, always check your tack, whether you're riding or driving, check it yourself and never just be dependent on grooms. But I didn't on that particular day, and I got got in the uh, sulky and took off around the track, 
And then the first time I came to a corner, I realized that he had left off the whole rigging that, around the back quarters that keeps the, the rig from running into the horse. So every time I tried to stop the horse, the carriage would run into the horse, and then the horse would bolt and take off, and it finally just went completely crazy and took off at a mad gallop and got to a corner, and the whole thing flipped and threw me about 30 feet in the air. Once again, I managed to walk away from it unscathed, but I learned a very important lesson, and that is always check your tack yourself. Never count on other people to have done things for you. And ever since that day, I've checked every saddle, I've checked every billet strap, <laughs> and every rigging of a horse that I've worked ever since. I've always taken all those little, uh, little uh, things that happen to you that don't kill you as a warning <laughs> to remind you. As I said, driving is a very, very dangerous sport. There's just, just by virtue of the fact there's so much to get caught up in, in terms of lines and gear. So we must be very careful and approach this very carefully. But once again, that's the beauty of the ground driving. And I'm sure you know, since you train carriage horses, you would want to have a horse very well uh, in hand before you put them in the carriage and decide you're going to drive off in it. So now getting back to this walk work, once again, about the best thing that I see here in this video is the walk work. It's about the best, uh, closest you come to getting the horse there. We can see when you get on, you can see how this horse, watch, watch the back legs now, how it seems to be almost moving like it's stuck on heavy fly paper or in mud. You see how the horse has to kind of pull its legs up. That's because it's dropping its back underneath you. So even here, even in this walk, the horse is basically just pulling itself along by its shoulders. And the hind legs are having very little to do with the movement. So when you see horses stuck the way this one is, the way you see those hind legs kind of almost like it's coming out of glue or heavy mud in those back legs. So the back legs are just kind of trailing along behind, doing whatever they can, and kind of dragging the toes over the ground because the front end is doing all the work. So we have quite a bit of work to do with this horse, but you're certainly on the right track. You've had some good moments in the walk, and if you can get it in the walk, just know that ultimately you'll get it all the way around. But just once again, consider the confirmation of your horse. Once again, this horse is never going to be a horse with a big high headset. So that's what you have to realize when you're driving. This horse is never going to look like a Frisian when it's being driven. That doesn't mean it can't be driven. doesn't mean it can't collect all these things. It just means that the head and neck is going to be in a different position than a horse that has a different kind of head and neck set. They're all a little bit different. So when we try to, you know, put the old square peg in the round hole, as they say, you know, it just doesn't work very well. So when you encounter the kind of resistance that you were encountering with this horse in the bridle, you know, when, and you could see it when the horse shortened up, go back and look at that again, since I've included that here in the video, how as soon as the horse gets neck, neck gets really shortened up, and of course, that's the trouble with driving. So you need to be giving your hand, just like when you ride and you're driving, you need to be sure that you're giving the horse and letting that neck out before you take too much hold. And once again, a good place to practice that is in the long reining before you ever get the horse hooked up with the carriage. So you really get a good feel for having really quiet hands. So driving is a bit like lunging in the sense that, you know, in lunging, we have the rein in one hand and we have the whip, which sends the horse forward. Well, the same thing is true when you're driving, you know, so it's, it's really no difference. It's the same basic principles and the horse has to be doing the same basic things in order to do this well. So as I was saying before, if you try to you know, drive a horse cross country under uneven, over uneven ground, it's going to make a huge difference to uh, you making it or not, whether the horse is working over its back. That is, because every time you step in a little hole, the horse is not going to either go lame or, or, or take a tumble down with you. Now, this walk is getting better. And once again, as we see how the horse stretches in the walk, now watch how the hind legs are moving so much better. So it's undeniable once you see horses working over the back and you can actually open your eyes and look at how they're moving behind and not look at the horse's head and neck set, you really begin to see how this affects the horse. So once again, look up even just that little bit of lowering there, how much better the walk already is. It's still a little sticky, but there you're starting to improve it. And we watch that every time the horse begins to stretch deeper, we see that improve. And that's what we're looking for. You know, it should feel like you'll get to the place in the walk when you find the right place. It's almost like a wave picking you up because that's essentially what it is. The back is coming up. So remember, all we're doing at this level is finding the head and neck position that allows the back to become free. So as when backs are very undeveloped, the horses must stretch all the way down 
you know, just like you stretching over and bending, bending, uh, you know, and stretching out your loin. That's essentially what we're doing here with the horse so that we can build that wave. So once again, when it's right, you'll just feel and you get all the parts to line up in the right frame. You know, however you've been going before, you'll feel the horse suddenly much freer and much more swingy forward. So every time you lose that here, just keep trying to open it up, get a little more active. So big takeaway here in the walk is just try, try to get it more active to start with because you have to have some activity, some movement coming forward before you can then adjust the frame of the horse. That's what it means to ride a horse from the back to the front or drive a horse from the back to the front is the same issue. But once again, having watched a lot of those videos, um, I will continue to look and see if I can find one at some point that shows a horse really working over its back. There was one that was pretty good that I saw from that competition you were at, but most of them were having the same problem that you're having to a greater or lesser degree. Their, their horses were hollow. I even saw one on there that was completely sway backed. And of course it was bracing against the bridle and it's very irregular in its gates, um, that kind of thing. Which when you're driving, I mean, I can imagine it'd be, be like driving with somebody in a car. You know, I used to have an aunt who you'd get in the car with her and she'd pump the gas pedal as you drove. So the car, car was constantly going slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast. You know, that's kind of what they're doing, you know, when they're driving these horses that are upside down. We see the rhythm. As soon as they try to open it, the horse just legs look like they're flinging all over the place because they're so disconnected. And once again, very little lift. So that's what we want to see. The horse lifting off the ground a little bit. So once again, this walk is good. Now there, we start to start to take off. So you're certainly on the right track here. Just don't be in a hurry and you'll get here. And just know that there's absolutely no point in going on doing anything badly. So if you try the trot and you can't get it there, just try it for a few moments and come back and restretch the walk, just as I advised you to do on the lunge line. But this is really fun to watch. I really applaud you for uh, working and driving. I think it's a wonderful sport and a real art. I've uh, been fortunate enough in St. Louis, they have a big carriage driving club there and I was able to uh, watch a little bit of that as it was going on in my literally in my backyard when I lived there at the Bridlesboro Hunt Club. And it was really great to see the guy who was doing it. I, his name eludes me right now, but he was the uh, carriage driver and trainer for the Queen of England. And he was absolutely fantastic. I mean, had some of these horses just really working beautifully over the backs and doing the right thing. So once again, all great horsemen know the same thing. They know how to get their horse to lift its back and connect the front and back end. Now look how good that walk is starting to look there. Now that's the best walk we've seen. It actually starts to swing a little bit and wants to see, see how the back end loses that stiff, uh, kind of out of the mud, out of the hole kind of walk to it and it starts to swing. So that's what we're looking for. So don't be in a hurry. Spend all the time it takes to get the horse stretching at the walk before you go to the trot work. Uh, take a look at that lunging work, get him a little closer to you, a little more active, push the hindquarters away, try the sham bone if you need to. And then I'd like to see you go back to, uh, once you can get the horse stretching in your groundwork, go back to the driving work in long reins and let's see how that take how that looks. And you really should practice this there and really getting the horse back and really work on just really keeping the horse light and not forcing the frame. This is Will Faber from Arch Ride. See you next time. Great job.